Uh, so, hey guys, uh, welcome to Wednesday midweek at Sean and Tegan's house. Hey, man. Uh, it is nice and comfy. The first time we came here, I remember we sat on the carpet, and man, that carpet still feels as good as it did back then. Uh, so, we've been going over. Sorry, let me just. We've been going over the first and second Timothy's uh, pizza series. Mm -hmm. And so uh, usually we send it out to the members of the church. So if you're sitting next to a member of the church, please do ask them, hey, can you send me that, that lesson that Chris sent? And if you don't have the lesson, please also nudge a brother or sister and ask him for the lesson. Sweet. So today, we are on lesson number five. Come on. So we are in fact on chapter number five, chapter five in First Timothy. Come on. And this lesson is an awesome lesson. Come on. This lesson is a call to lead and also to encourage. Mm. Your leaders are always being called. Yeah. There's always a need for leader leaders. There's always a need for somebody to lead. There's always a call for leadership to everyone. And there's even more of a call to leadership for us here today simply because we're a mission team. Mm. Yeah. We're here in New Zealand where, if you look at it, the, the doctrine here in New Zealand so far isn't doing so good at all. Mm. And so it's incredible how God sent our mission team for us to come here to be able to plant a church that's part of a worldwide sold out church. Mm. Yeah. And so each person here is actually called to be a leader. Yeah. Wow. And that's the incredible thing. If you came with the church, you're a leader. Yeah. If you're baptized into the church, you're baptized into a mission team, Come you on. are also a leader. Come yeah. on. You know, when people are called to be leaders, it's not just a, a crazy experience for them, but it's also a crazy experience for those who watch them become oh, leaders. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I, I saw Pascal and Timoteo lead a Bible study. Oh, oh these guys know the story. It was so funny. Uh, so we're there in the Bible study and they I didn't know what quite was going on. <laughs> yeah. I was just sitting there and I thought, okay, Pascal's in in this Bible study. I, I, I was confused last night as who was going to do it. So they made their agreement with Pascal's doing. Pascal's breaking down the scripture. And at the end of that, he goes, okay, any questions? No? Okay, sweet. And usually you go, okay, now please open up your Bible to this next scripture. Instead, Timoteo goes, oh, I got this from Caddy. And he says, open your Bible to the scripture. <laughs> and Timoteo breaks it down. I wonder, okay, is there something going on here? <laughs> okay, so Timoteo does that scripture. Timoteo does the next scripture. And then after he's finished doing that, I expect, okay, maybe Timoteo's doing it because Pascal got a bit shaky. Next thing you know, Pascal goes, no, hey Tim, I got this one. <laughs> no, Pascal's needing to study again. I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. And it was just incredible being able to watch them. It turned out they had planned it the whole time. Uh, though it had gone a little differently to what they had planned. <laughs> and at the end of the day, the guy saw he needed to seek God. Um, unfortunately, he chose not to seek God, which is why he's not here today. But the benefit of that is that we now, today, have two cranking leaders. Come on. And that is Tim and Pascal. Come on. Come on. Yes. It's absolutely incredible, incredible to see people grow into being leaders. You know, a life of leadership... Cool, uh, sorry. And life as a leader calls us to also encourage one another. Mm -hmm. When you're living the life of a leader, we need to encourage one another. Yeah. But also leaders need humility yeah. in order to be taught, in order to grow, in order to learn. Pascal and uh, Timotel needed that humility to be able to learn, and then they needed encouragement also. Mm. You know, today in Peter's lesson, in letter, we see him call for leaders. And he calls young aspiring leaders to be humble. Mm. And in the end, we see how encouragement was something that gave Peter strength to continue on going out there, making disciples, and keep on going, going out there on his own mission. Mm. So today's title for my lesson is, A Call to Lead and Encourage. Come on, come on. We start at point number one, grace produces spiritual leadership. Mm. First Peter chapter 5, uh, we're going to read from verse 1. To the elders among you, I appeal as I appeal as a fellow leader. Oh, sorry, elder, a witness of Christ's suffering, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock, that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, 
as God wants you to be, not greedy, not greedy for money, but eager to serve. Not leading, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Mm -hmm. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Yo, Peter's an elder. In addition to being an apostle and a preacher, there are three words that come under the role of the elder in the New Testament. One is an elder. Another is a shepherd. Uh, and this translates into pastor as, in Ephesians, uh, as it says in Ephesians chapter 4. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. The word itself is used in that society to describe a keeper of sheep who had two basic functions. One was to direct the sheep, lead them, and to not allow them to go astray or get lost. And by application, the spiritual shepherd would have the same two responsibilities towards the church. He himself would also look over them. Another one is to be an overseer, a bishop, an elder, uh, an older person. So note the verb from the same words in Matthew chapter 25, verse 26. Uh, we see the verb of this. I was sick and you looked after me. Mm. And in James chapter 1, verse 27, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. To be an overseer involves an examination of and providing for a person's needs. Right. To be an overseer, you need to be able to know what the people under you need mm. and actually be able to provide it for them. Mm. We, see it, we see other descriptions of this in the scriptures below. So leading, leadership in the church must be spiritual. Right. In these verses, Peter gives two inf uh, gives some information about what leadership in God's family should be and what it should not be. Mm. Because leadership in the church is vital and yet so often misunderstood, uh, in this lesson there is uh, another lesson entitled Authority in God's Kingdom. Peter is calling for leadership in God's Kingdom. He's looking for people to stand up and begin to lead. Mm. Peter here is talking to the older man. The older man in the church that, is, uh, that he is writing to, to ask that these older men take on the role of shepherds. He is looking for readers, sorry, he is looking for those who are for leaders. And though he is talking to older men, it does not mean it does not apply to us younger men, right? Mm -hmm. It applies to everybody. So don't think just because it starts off with saying older men, it doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. It applies from the youngest of us to the very oldest of us. So Pascal, you better be listening also. <laughs> we came here to lead. We as a mission team came here to lead, so to do something here in New Zealand. Yeah. I look at this room and I see leaders in everyone. Believe it or not, I see leaders in absolutely everyone. I see a leader in you, Tyra. I see a powerful leader in you, Jessica. I see a leader in Wayne, and I see a leader in each and every single one of you. I don't mean the kind of leader that brings people to church or to Bible talk or to study the Bible. No, you guys aren't brilliant. I don't see leaders that preach, you know, give good Bible talks or speak give preach, uh, speeches on Women's Day or Bible studies. Now you guys got to bear with me, I'm actually going in somewhere with this. <laughs> what I mean is that I see a lot more than just someone who preaches on a special day. I see a lot more than someone who, who, does, who brings one good person but doesn't study the Bible with them. I see a lot more than someone who just has knowledge to give but nothing else to give. I see people that are powerful preachers. I see people that are powerful friends. Up here in front of the church, I see you guys preaching also. I see you guys preaching on the streets. I see you guys preaching in the hearts of all those you interact with. I see more than just a normal, just a simple person who brings people to church. I see someone who makes an impact, whether you're there or not. I see people that are far more than Bible talk leaders. But people who are overseers of Bible talk leaders are uh, Bible talk leaders because your Bible talk grows. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I see you guys as overseers. I see people that follow you because they like you. People who are fond of you and so say they want to follow you, they want to be with you. I see that they like the things you say. They like the things that you do. And even how you dress. I see people wanting to spend time with you. Not because they are being obedient to the scriptures. But because they love your leadership. Mm. That's what I see in each and every one of you. That is what I see. But as I was writing this, I was wondering, is that what you see? Do you see that in yourself? Do you see that in each other? Also, do you see that in yourself? What well, God believes it. God believes the same thing I, I believe. How do I know that? Because He sent you here. Mm -hmm. He sent you here to be leaders to the people of Auckland, mm -hmm. to the people of New Zealand, not just Auckland, to Tonga, to, to the Cook Islands, mm -hmm. to Fiji, to all of these places, to PNG. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. God believes it. He sent you, Ian. To be a father to those who had no fathers. Mm -hmm. He said you to be a father to young men who need someone in their life. I see, he said you, Millie, to teach young women that value is in them and not in how they dress. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see each every single one of you teaching somebody something. Mm -hmm. Each of us here, we're here to lead the people in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. To Come show on, them the truth and to love and love. Yeah. Respect and friendship. Yeah. Do you believe this applies to you? Mm -hmm. Do you believe you are a leader? Everyone here either came on a mission team and is a leader or was baptized into a mission team and has now become a leader. A leader is focused on others. Come on. I think the coolest thing about leading is that personally your life it is a joy. <laughs> Now I'm not saying it's a joy because you meet so many people and so many people go through so many different crazy things and so you compare your, your bad situations with people who don't have God and you look at them and go, ha, thank God I'm not like that. No, 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 no. Your life is a joy because you have fewer problems. You see fewer problems in your life. Mm. Yo, I'm still, I still have bumps in my own life. I'm still learning what it means to be a husband. As my grandfather says, we're all learning. <laughs> We're all learning what it means to be a husband, and when most of you get there, or some of you get there, uh, you'll definitely learn what, what I mean as well. But I have bumps with my wife. I'm still learning how to look after my wife, how to take care of her. Yo, know, today we had our very first uh, little cancelling time with Joe and Kerry. Ooh. And, and in a way, uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, I learned that if I don't plan well, everything is kind of uh, my fault. <laughs> Yeah, so if I put the tea, if I don't put the tea towels in the right place, it is, it's, it's a love issue. So even when it comes to that, I've got to learn to be able to love my wife how she wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. I've got to learn to value my wife. You know, every now and then, I, I still do dumb things or make dumb mistakes. Uh, today I told my wife, I thought I was being cute, I was like, you look, I don't know if I should say it. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Let's say, say one I've already, let's say one I've already said. Uh, the other day, I told her she looked like, she looked really Mexican in one of the tops she had picked out. She's not worn that top again. So, uh, I still do dumb things. Uh, and again, my love, I am very sorry to say it. But when my focus is on everyone else, hmm. On other people, I stop thinking about whether or not I want to get out of bed in the morning. Mm. I stop thinking about that. Yeah. I stop thinking about all these things, whether I look fat, whether whether I can do this or I can do that, whether my English is good or isn't. Mm. And you look at Wayne. Ooh. Wayne is someone who focuses on the people around him. Yeah, come on, Wayne. You know, in the last couple of weeks, Wayne has been challenged to focus on his and learn. Uh, sorry, focus and practice his pronunciation. Mm -hmm. uh, and Wayne doesn't really have to learn to pronounce anything differently. Wayne is Chinese. Who cares? Uh, that's how he speaks. It's a cool accent. But he, he does it simply so that other people can understand him a bit more. Because uh, I really want Wayne to start leading Bible talk. Absolutely. And if Wayne can, can be understood by everyone, then he can lead a great Bible talk. Come on, Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. You got it, Wayne. But when it comes to Wayne, he, he, he doesn't really care about 
repeating his sentences. He doesn't care if he has to rephrase the sentence. He doesn't care if he has to say it over and over in order for people to understand. For Wayne, his accent isn't something that holds him back. Why? Because he cares far too much about that person's salvation to wonder if or if not they're going to laugh at him. Mm. He cares far too much about their salvation. And because of that, Wayne is incredible when it comes to going out there and talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne doesn't mind repeating himself. He doesn't care about that stuff. Why? Because he's focused on others. Mm. He cares too much about the guy who lacks the truth more than his uh, in areas in his life where he may lack. Mm. You know, give people a reason to follow you though. Amen. Come on. You've got Come to on, give Chris. people a reason to follow you. Yeah. Now, do people really need a reason to follow you when the Bible calls them to? Not really. Mm. You, you don't actually need a reason. But this is actually the difference between a good leader and a bad leader. Mm. Yeah. Let's check out David and Saul, for example. Mm. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, from verse 5, it says, Afterwards, David was conscience stricken. So he had just cut off a corner of Saul's robe when Saul was going to the toilet in the cave. Uh, Constance shook him, for he had cut off a corner of his robe. He said, to his, he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord appointed, or lay my hand on him. For he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went away. Saul was a terrible leader and David had more reason to kill him than any of us have a reason to kill our leaders today. We'll get to that point mm. but from this we see the difference between a good leader and a bad leader mm. is that the followers want the bad leader dead. Amen. But you know Saul he, 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 did not, he did not kill him because God made him king mm. and he respected God's decision. Mm. He respected what God wanted and so David Followed Saul. It can be it can be uh, sorry. It can be fair to say that the biggest difference between a good leader and a bad leader is whether or not the people want to kill the bad leader, the good leader or not, mm. the leader or not. But before we even get that far, a leader is someone that people want to follow. Yeah. Mm. That people have a desire to follow. Do people? want to follow you. Mm -hmm. I actually don't want you guys to answer that actually. Because we're often too hard on ourselves or we often lie to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Instead, ask someone else, what is one thing that would make them follow you if you let them? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And then also ask them, what is one thing that you can do better in order to make them want to follow you? In order to be a better leader. A great leader Sorry, one great leader that I wanted to follow more than the scriptures can ever persuade me to follow is this gentleman called Michael Hart back in London. Mm -hmm. An incredible old man and he is a shepherd uh, in the London church. Mm -hmm. He worked a full-time job. He led a ministry of 30 plus. He had children and he had errands to run. Mm -hmm. But an incredible thing about Michael is that I knew he always cared for me. Mm -hmm. And we spent almost every day together. Whether it was in Bible studies or sharing our faith or running those errands that he had to do to get uh, do, and so I went with him to do each of those. Mm. Who are you investing in? Yeah, that's a good question to mm. ask yourself. If you want to be a good leader or you want to lead, focus on someone. Begin to invest in someone's life. Mm. Yeah. You're ever, you ever, uh, if you're ever spending, are you spending time? heart, effort on yourself and struggling through life and your ministry or are you spending everything you have on the people around you? Mm -hmm. My challenge for you today is to go out there and find somebody to study the Bible with and invest everything you have in them. Mm -hmm. Point number two. <coughs> Mark Mark Chris. Mark Chris. Point number two. Grace produces humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on, verse. From verse 5, <laughs> young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, 
under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Humility before men. Younger people must respect those who are older. This is in the Bible. Mm. Humility to man is going, you may not be a nice person, but I will respect you. Mm -hmm. You may not always get things right, mm. but I'll follow you. Humility is considering everything above, any, everyone above yourself. As it says in Philippians chapter 2, from verse 3 to 4, mm -hmm. do nothing out of selfish ambition or uh, empty pride, but in humility consider others more important than yourselves. Each of you should look not to, the, not to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. <coughs> Sometimes this can even be a person's opinions. Being submissive to a guy's opinion. You know, Wayne really doesn't have to work on his pronunciation. He doesn't. He's Chinese. It's a strong accent. Whatever. It was an opinion shared that, uh, shared that he improved his uh, pronunciation. Would it help people understand him more? Yeah. But can anyone find me a scripture that teaches that someone needs to improve how they speak? There is one scripture where people were killed because they pronounced something a certain way. Well, let me get into that one. <laughs> this humility is, is, is the humility that leaders need. Mm -hmm. it's a humi he has a humility that goes, okay, what can make me better as a person yeah. so that I can reach out to more people? Mm. What can I do from, from a man's perspective to be able to be all things wow. to all men? This is humility. What kind of attitude do you have when someone tells you to make a biblical change to your life? Mm -hmm. Not even opinion, a biblical change mm -hmm. to your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like sharing your faith. What kind of attitude do you have towards that? Setting up a Bible study. Do you present an attitude towards that? Or encouraging each other? When should, sorry, we should all be clothed with humility. Mm. Mm. And when I hear Peter thinking, saying this, I picture him putting, uh, seeing Jesus put that towel on just before he washed the disciples' feet. Mm. Mm. Jesus humbled himself to, to get on his knees in a towel and wash them. Mm. That was humility. Humility is also being open about how you feel or confessing yourself. Humility before God. Some of you are waiting for a rebuke from God. Yikes. Mm. Simply because you aren't humble to your leaders. Mm. You argue. Instead of looking to understand, you object to what your leader thinks. And you put your point out there as though you are the one leading. Mm. Sometimes there is even a fake giving of your heart. And really, you can't wait to get home and just complain and grumble. Humility isn't dragging your feet to do whatever you're asked. Mm. It's giving your heart. And funny enough, even expressing how you feel to your leader takes some humility. Yeah. Not as a child though, I remember the days when I expressed how I felt towards my parents. I'd stamp my feet and I'd cry and throw things on the ground. I still kind of do that with Madani from time to time. Uh, but not as a child does. <laughs> but with maturity. Humility is having a heart to express maturely and respectfully how you feel with a heart of accepting whatever correction you may get. Yeah. An attitude that says okay to whatever happens next, whether or not Sean or Tegan change their mind. Mm. It's, it's kind of like getting 25 numbers. In the beginning I start with, we're going after getting 25 numbers of people we meet outside who want to study the Bible, come to church, or come to Bible talk, mm -hmm. or anything like that. And in the beginning, uh, I, I was a bit, oh, I don't want to do this. I can think of many, many reasons as to why I felt as though it was wrong. As to why I felt this wasn't a, the right thing to do. I believe there were many times that even I hated the challenge. But the only time I actually hated the challenge was when my heart wasn't behind Sean. Mm. That was the only time I hated the challenge. When I didn't have 25 contacts, I hated the challenge. 
But believe me, the day I had 25, you did not hear a peep from me. <laughs> there was no complaining, there was no grumbling, there was a smile on my face. I don't have to share on Sunday. I get to play TNT and of course have a good time with my wife after. Amen. No grumbling. That was simply because I, get, I put my heart behind it. I even wanted to ask Sean if he had spoken to Joe about it. But now today, I, I think of that and I wonder, who cares about what Joe thinks? Mm. Sean is my leader. Mm. If, Sean, if, if Joe was my leader, he would be here today. Mm. Yeah. Surely I should ex have the heart to accept anything that Sean tells me to do. Come on, Chris. Because Sean is here. Mm. Do you respect the leaders God put in your life? Mm. It says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Mm. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Humble yourselves. God will not force you. And you do not really want him to even strongly urge you hmm. to do anything. Wow. He will lift you up in due time. And the right time is when you no longer care about whether or not you're honored. About whether or not you're right and someone is wrong. Then when God does honor you, you'll give him the glory at that time. Hmm. Notice how closely connected humility and trust is. Mm. Yeah. You cannot surrender your burdens to him unless you first humble yourself. In point one, I called you to be leaders. I called you to begin to lead. But in fact, a good leader is also a good follower. Mm. My challenge for you, respect God. Respect your leaders. Consider other others above yourself. Amen. Point number three, grace produces strength. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Come on, Point number, uh, sorry, First Peter chapter 5 from verse 8, it says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, Ooh. after you have suffered a little while, yeah. will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With the help of Silas, whom I, re whom I uh, regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, stands, uh, stands, sends uh, her greetings, and so and so does my my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to you all who are in Christ. We need to strengthen. Sorry, we need strength against Jesus. Come on. Uh, against Jesus. Satan. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Against Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. Come on, Chris. We yeah. need strength against Satan. Yeah. 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 yeah, Satan is called a serpent because he is subtle. Mm -hmm. mm. And a lion because he because his because of his strength and uh, victoriousness. Viciousness. Sorry, viciousness. Mm. By his own ambition, he goes everywhere looking for those he can devour. Mm -hmm. He's just looking for somebody to take out. Lions attack the weakest or the, or the youngest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Revelation chapter 12 from verse 9 to 10, it says uh, Satan is described as a devious and an accuser. Mm -hmm. In other words, he seeks to make us unaware of our sins or make us overwhelmed by them. Mm -hmm. As individuals, we are hurt in both ways. But we tend to be more influenced by one or other ploys. To be, to be accused or to be deceived in the nature. Yeah. Knowing that brothers face the same trials kind of provides a little strength. It kind of gives us a, a, a little strength just by knowing that, hey, someone is going through the same thing. 
Mm. It gives us a little strength in resisting him. I don't know, but there is just something that something in knowing that Pascal goes through the same thing I go. Through. <laughs> yeah. There's just something special knowing that even Tegan goes through the same thing I go through, or Ian, or Margot, mm. everyone in this room mm. goes through the same thing I go through. Mm. Sometimes that actually allows me to connect with him. It's something that allows me to connect with Sean, and it's something that allows me to connect with Wayne. And that's because we are together. We're together in the suffering, we're together in the fight, and we're de together encouraging one another. Mm. God will strengthen us. <coughs> when we are suffering, He has not lost sight of any plan that He has for us. Yeah. God still has His plan for us, believe it or not. And neither should we lose sight of this also. Mm. But our little while suffering, in contrast to our eternity of glory, is just a simple lot of life.